Good afternoon. We are. Good to see you. All right. So, you know, it's great to see you again. Um, I just want to orient the audience a little bit um, because fuel cells can be a little bit wonky. Um, so Bloom, Bloom makes fuel cells that run a fuel. So in Bloom's case, usually it's natural gas. It they run, runs across a stack of catalysts to chemically make the electricity and doesn't involve combustion. Um, and so Bloom has been developing and selling this technology for 15, 20 years. Um, but all of a sudden, you know, it's a hot topic. And why are all the data center operators suddenly interested in Bloom and fuel cells? Tell us, KR. So um, uh, good afternoon, everyone. And Katie and Axios, thank you for having me here. Um, look, the stage is about 500 square feet, OK? If you look at typical cabinets of CPU servers, those are the servers that are in all your computers that you're used to, OK? It'll roughly consume about 130 kilowatts of power. That 130 kilowatts is the equivalent power just for the stage worth of servers in a data center for 100 homes, 100 average US homes. The new GPU chip, Blackwell chip, that's coming out is 13 times more than that. So instead of 100 homes, this little space of data center will require the same amount of power as 1,300 US homes. And if you listen to uh, you know, uh, uh, Jensen from NVIDIA speak, three years from now, the Ruben Plus chip, that's six times that. So close to 7,000 homes worth of electric power is what it'll take to power just the computers in a room the size of the stage. And what do they want on-site power? That's that kind of power to be able to provide in your neighborhood is not going to be easy because power is usually produced far away in a large central power plant and it's brought by highways and surface streets called transmission and distribution to where you need to get it. And building that transmission distribution takes years. And we as a country None of us want it in our backyard. So the amount of litigation that goes on, the amount of stuff that goes on before anything gets done, the chances of getting another 100,000 miles of transmission built in the next six years. Why six years? By then, the world would have decided if America is going to lead in artificial intelligence or some other country that's not as democratic is going to lead. And that's not a choice. We have to win this. For us to win this, we need the power. For us so to need time, the power, time, time power. to power becomes important. Yeah. And you cannot, if you cannot depend on your transmission distribution, on your highways to be open, then you better be where you need to be instead of having to travel, which means the power station comes right next to where your data center is. So on-site power becomes very important. Bloom was founded 24 years ago with the notion that this moment will come. We built the company for this moment. On-site power becomes extremely important. So what do we do? Like you said, we take natural gas or hydrogen in the future, any fuel, we, we are agnostic to it as long as it has the hydrogen. Without burning, without combustion, we convert that chemical energy in the fuel to electricity. No air pollution, no noise. So you can put it in a neighborhood. There's no smokestacks coming out of it and it's highly reliable power. That's why data centers are interested in our solution. Gotcha. And the policy environment obviously has changed a lot in um, Washington um, around energy companies. Um, how does this affect Bloom? So we have always believed that there are three things that are extremely important when it comes to electricity and energy. It needs to be affordable. It needs to be available and accessible. And it needs to be clean, because at the end of the day, we need to breathe the air around where, where, where things happen. If you can provide all those three things reliably, there will be a market, no matter what the policies are. Everybody needs electricity. Right now, electrical abundance in this country is a national security issue. It's not just an energy issue. It's, a, it's not just a cost issue. Can so to build your own power plant for the data center, 
These are companies that make 60 to 80 percent margins. They can afford to pay to build the power plant rather than making the ratepayer pay for it. That's an other argument politically for the power plant to be paid for by the person who wants that much power in the small space. Yeah. And I know we talked about this before, the emergence of DeepSeek and more efficient AI was this kind of pivotal moment in terms of you know, perception for the industry. Um, do you feel in your position of you know, talking to data center companies, do you feel like the AI infrastructure build out has gotten over its skis? Uh, I, I would say we are gonna look back and very similar to the 2001.com time where the stock market crashed on the dot-com companies. But Internet 1.0 was not a bubble. How many of us don't use the Internet? Do you use more of it, less of it? Same thing's going to happen with AI. I'm not going to talk to stock prices of certain companies. But if you just look at AI, we can't overstate how important it is going to be in our lives. So I'll give you a very simple example to demonstrate, right? A million square foot warehouse you know, uh, taking care of your fulfillment needs of whatever you order online. It used to be about 1.5 megawatts, mostly manual, forklifts going and taking out pallets, unpacking pallets, everything. The modern one within two years that they're building right now and talking to us for power, instead of 1.5 megawatts, is going to be 6 megawatts. Three of those megawatts are for inference AI to do all this work more smartly with greater accuracy and with lower cost so you can enjoy the benefit. Every aspect of our life is going to be touched in some profound way in terms of productivity and gains by AI. So if anything, if deep seek like things make training easier, inference is going to happen a lot faster and inference is where 90% of the demand is going to be both for the data centers as well as for the power. So if anything, it only speeds up the time to power issue and not slows it down. So the AI infrastructure build out is on schedule and just gonna keep growing. There's kind of, kind of no bubble. Uh, I, think, I think Jensen said that right, the CEO of NVIDIA la, you know, like last week. The only restriction to AI's growth is going to be, is there enough power? It is about power. And Kara, you've been in the clean tech sector um, for over two decades. You've seen lots of ups and downs. You know, where are we right now um, in this kind of phase of the climate tech kind of boom and um, cooling off period? You know, I think, I think energy transition got off on the wrong foot. How so? Um, we didn't do all of the above until we got the clean technologies to get to maturity. The way I describe it is we were flying an airplane at 30,000 feet called LIFE, modern LIFE that requires electricity, single engine plane, and we were replacing the engine, uh, new engine, and yanking out the old engine before the new engine got fully running. That's a bad idea. We need the new engine, but those things take time. So we need that transition to be smooth and we need all of the above through that process, and it's about optimizing the amount of carbon dioxide in the atmosphere, which is what the climate issue is, not a fight between fossil and renewable. It's about reducing the carbon footprint. So I think all of the above is where it's going to go going forward. And you know, transitions sometimes take some missteps before they go, but at the end of it all, this distributed world with abundance of energy is going to create a better world for our children and our grandchildren. I'm an optimist. I believe that there'll be a better future. And give us, um, in the little time we have left, what's the climate pitch for the Bloom Energy fuel cells? I know if they use natural gas, I'm wondering kind of what do you, how do you sell it to your customers and um, talk about like carbon emission reduction? So of all the fuels available today for anybody in the world, the cleanest of fuels available in scale for modern life is natural gas, of all the fuels. There is no engine, it's not an engine, but no conversion device that converts natural gas to electricity more efficiently, more cleanly, and more accessibly, and faster time to power than Bloom does. Period. There's nothing in the world. And 
for us all in this room, it's an American innovation made in America with American jobs. Yeah. <clears throat> Um, in terms of um, scaling up the company, you know, you've spent the last 15 years kind of reducing costs. It's a capital efficient business. I know on your earnings call, you're talking about potentially like raising money um, to kind of scale the business. Can you talk a little bit more about that? Do you plan to do sure. that? Sure. So today we are at a scale where we can do a gigawatt a year. That's about the size of a large nuclear power plant's worth of stuff. Uh, it took us 10 years to cumulatively build one gigawatt. Starting, you know, starting this year, we can do a gigawatt a year. And if we need to scale up, we can keep scaling up gigawatt at a time, so we can do two gigawatts, three gigawatts a year. It'll take us only nine months to build that factory. And we are, we are prepared for that. We want that opportunity. Yeah, so no comment on fundraising? Uh, I don't think we, we need to raise funds to be able to build the factory. Okay, gotcha. Um, and kind of my final question in terms of, you know, you're looking at the policy environment. I mean, do you feel like um, from your perspective running Bloom that the, the Trump administration is going to be supportive of your type of technology or is it more like we're, you know, solar and wind are kind of, you know, struggling in the policy environment? Look, uh, President Trump has made it very clear even in the uh, World Economic Forum, you know, Davos speech that we are going to win the AI war. We're not going to cede it to China. If you're going to do that, we need lots of power very quickly. And the only way we can do that, nuclear is going to take many years. We need to start developing it, but it's going to take many years. Natural gas is our only option to do that. If we don't do that, we are A, going to lose the AI war to China, and we are going to use, lose the climate war because they're going to build coal power plants to power their AI data centers, which is a lot worse for the environment. So we will lose it on both sides. So for that reason, I think the administration will be highly embracing of what we do, especially given that we are an American-made technology. Okay. Well, thank you very much. Unfortunately, that's all the time we have. Um, appreciate this insightful conversation. Um, to our audience, just sit tight for a few more great conversations. Um, and don't forget to stick around after for the networking reception. And one um, note on the stage program, um, after this conversation, we're going to stick around for um, Serve Robotics, followed by Kraken in that order. Um, but thank you so much, Kay. Thank you.